Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist, and today we're going to take a look at the ladders in my game that I'm working on. Ladders were one of the very first interactable objects that I added to my game, but because they've been around the longest, they've also been broken more than anything else in the game as they've updated or made changes to how things work in the game. Now for the sake of reenacting this process, I've removed ladders from my game, which means that if Randall here wants to get up on top of this cliff, he's going to have to take the long way around um, to get there. So let's fix that and try to add a ladder to the game and see what sort of problems we might run into along the way. The first thing I wanted to do was build a visual representation of the model in Blender, and so of course I made a geometry node tree to do that. Now this ladder probably isn't going to be the final or only version of the ladder that's used in the game, but it is a template and any additional ladders I make will be modeled to the dimensions of these ladders. Once I'd finished the node group I made several ladders of different heights that I thought would be useful, and then I exported all of those as assets to Unity. In Unity, I took those assets and made them prefabs. And then to sort of denote them as testing objects, I just gave them all a yellow material color. From there, we can add a ladder into the scene and position it where we want the ladder to be. Now in my game, any object that you want to interact with is an entity. So let's add an entity component to this game object, as well as a box collider so that we can determine if we're clicking on it or not. From there, we have an empty interactable object that highlights when we hover over it, but currently does nothing because there's no behavior attached to it. To make it so that the ladder is able to do ladder things, let's add a new script. We'll call it ladder. And we'll add some code to it to be able to handle the event that fires when you click on an entity. To do that, we just need a reference to the entity and to register and deregister from the event. For now, let's just have that log a message to the console. We'll add the new ladder component to the game object. Start up the game, click on the ladder, and we can see that we get the message click handled by ladder in the console. So now that we have a place where we can do something when the ladder is interacted with, it would be good to take a minute and think about what a ladder is. Now it's easy to get over the top about this and to say, well, what if you wanted to do extension ladders, or what if you wanted to be able to move the ladders, or what if, or what if, or what if, you know. So I'd say as a general rule, keep it as simple as possible. So for the sake of this first version, we'll say a ladder is two points, one at the bottom and one at the top of the ladder, which we'll call the origin and the destination. And then those can be used to describe a line going from the bottom of the ladder to the top. Then what the ladder does will be to move a unit from the bottom of the ladder to the top of the ladder. So let's implement that first basic version of a ladder in the code. We need to add two vector threes to define the origin and the destination of the ladder. Then we can add some handy gizmos to draw those in the scene so that we can see where they are. Rather than just logging a message to the console, when we click on the ladder, we expect the selected unit to go over and climb the ladder. So let's write some code that describes what jobs an entity needs to do in order to use a ladder. We can get the selected entities from the selection system, and then from each of those we need a reference to their job sequencer, which is the component that manages the work that a unit is doing and the order that they do the different jobs in. Since the expected behavior is to move to the ladder and climb it, we need to add two jobs. The first is a move job, and we want to move to the base of the ladder. And the second is a use ladder job, which we will need to create. So we'll create a new class called use ladder, which is a type of job. And in that job, we essentially want to describe what a unit has to do when they use a ladder. In order to do that, we basically need to know about two things. The first is the ladder that the unit's trying to use, where it is, and where the origin and destination are, that sort of thing. So in order to be able to do that, we'll keep reference to the ladder, which we can pass in in the constructor. And the second thing we need to know about is the locomotion system of the unit that's trying to climb the ladder, because as the job is working, we want to be able to move the unit around in the world. We also want the job to take time, so we'll add a timer to control how long it takes to climb the ladder, although that is an overly simple approach and will need to be replaced later. With those variables in place, all we need to do is, as the job is updating, we need to add time to the timer, we need to move the unit between the two points that define the ladder, and then when the timer has completed, we need to return that the job is completed. With that in place, the unit should be able to climb up the ladder, so I did a quick test, and he teleports to the center of the world. Because the origin and destination vectors are in local space relative to the ladder object, we need to convert them to world space before trying to use them in the locomotion system of the unit. So having fixed that in another bug where the job was returning complete when it was supposed to be running, we can do a test and see that our character is indeed able to slide up the ladder. Unfortunately, he seems to be afraid of heights because when we click on the ladder again, he walks all the way around to the bottom. In order to fix that, I decided to determine if the character was closer to the origin or the destination point of the ladder and then move to whichever one was closer. 
However, this is not guaranteed to be correct either, because you can imagine the following scenario where your character is standing at the top of a chasm. At, from the bottom of the chasm on the opposite side, the ladder goes up. And if the character is to try to use the ladder by a straight distance, then the green destination point is closer to the character, which means that the character would have to walk all the way around to get to the top to use the ladder, when we can clearly see by the shape of the terrain that it would be faster to go to the blue origin point of the ladder. So in the future, I may have to use the pathfinding to find a path to both the origin and the destination, and then determine which of those two paths is shorter. For now, I'm sticking with this imperfect solution of just measuring straight line distance, which works for a lot of the normal cases that we'll encounter. In order to make that work, all we need to do is find where on the line between the two points that define the ladder is closest to the character, and move to that point rather than the origin of the ladder entity. With that done, I did a test, and we can see that the character is able to climb up the ladder, and then from the top, he's able to move to the top of the ladder to use it. However, there's two big problems. The first is that we're not changing his mode of locomotion, so he's using the default system, which snaps him to the ground, which is causing him to climb the ladder very slowly at first and then jump halfway up it. And the second is that when you use the ladder from the top, you teleport to the bottom and climb up again rather than climbing down. To solve the first problem, all I need to do is create a new traversal type, which I'll do with my enum tool which simply takes a list of strings and assigns them all a constant integer value. Once we've added a ladder traversal type, we just need to save that enum file, and it will update the script in Unity. And then on our ladder script, while we're using the ladder, we just want to set the unit's locomotion system to be in the traversal mode ladder. I also added the onCancel and onComplete methods so that I could set the unit's traversal type back to normal when we were done using the ladder. Testing that, I saw that the unit wasn't rotated correctly, so I added a line to rotate the character to match the forward direction of the ladder. And then I started working on the second problem, which was that the character teleports from the top of the ladder to the bottom and climbs up again, rather than climbing down. To solve that, I just added a distance check, comparing the distance to the origin and the distance to the destination. And if the destination is closer than the origin, then I'm going to flip the order of the points that we use so that we climb towards the bottom instead of towards the top. To do that, I calculate the near factor on the line, which will be 0 if we're at the origin point and 1 if we're at the destination. And then I assign the origin and destination to the points A, B, depending on if we're closer to the origin or the destination. Then I did a quick test and verified that the character was able to climb up the ladder and then climb down the ladder, which he was. The next thing I wanted to work on was the fact that it looks really bad because he doesn't have a ladder climbing animation. And since we just added the traversal type, we're already set up to do that because that traversal type is passed to the animation system to determine what animation to play. So I went back into Blender and made an animation of him climbing the ladder. Just as a quick tip, you might notice that the ladder is animated moving down rather than him animated climbing up the ladder. Because I think that's actually the easiest way to make an animation of him climbing in place rather than trying to animate the root moving up or um, anything like that. Then I made a quick idle animation, where I just took the pose from the climbing animation and adjusted it slightly, and then did a cloth simulation of a piece of cloth swinging, which I sort of manipulated with a collision object. Then I parented it empty to one of the vertices and used that as a target for some constraints to copy the location to some of the bones to get some nice swaying motions basically for free in about, I don't know, two minutes. Once I had those done, I just used my BNMs tool to export those animations to Unity and then set up a blend tree in Unity to blend between the idle animation and the climbing animation based on the character's velocity. That blend tree is a state in the traversal animation layer, and that state is transitioned to when the traversal type is set to 2, which is the value of the ladder enum in the script that we edited earlier. With that all done, I did a test to make sure that the animations played, which they did. Now this ladder, the way it is right now, is essentially the same as the very first version of a ladder that I added to the game way back when I started working on the project. The only differences are where I've had to interact with some of the newer systems that I added after I made that first version of the ladder. So this is the version of ladders that I had for quite a while while I was working on units and the characters and defining how abilities worked and stuff like that. But eventually I got around to improving the navigation system, and when I did that, I decided that I wanted to add a new feature to the ladders, which was that you could navigate through them. And that the AI and characters would be able to navigate through and use ladders just by the nature of them being part of the shortest path to a destination. In order to do that, we need to add the line that makes up our ladder to the navigation graph, and then connect it to the nearest triangles in the nav mesh. That was quite a bit of work on the navigation side of things when I first implemented it, but now all we have to do is add the navigation link component to our ladder game object. Now the origin and destination variables of the early ladder that we've replicated here 
were actually moved into the navigation link class and are used generally by anything that allows you to navigate from one part of the nav mesh to another, such as this door here. So I added a navigation link component to the ladder game object and then refactored the ladder script to remove the origin and destination and instead use the ones provided by the navigation link script. The navigation link also has an on move enter delegate which, which basically asks if there's any jobs that it should perform while navigating through the link. By assigning a function to that delegate we can tell the navigation link that you should use a use ladder job to navigate through this link. With that done I did a test and you can now see that I can click on the ground at the top of the ladder and the character is able to find a path going through the ladder and using the use ladder job to climb the ladder. This is a nice tidy version of the ladder script and it was in the project in this state for quite a while. But there was still one thing I really wanted to add, which if I'd realized how much trouble it was going to cause me, I might have not done. But that was that normally when you click to have your character move, the character moves to where you clicked with the cursor. However, if you click on a ladder because it's an interactable object rather than a place on the nav mesh, the character would climb all the way through the ladder and end up on the other side of it. So what I really wanted to add was a way for you to click at any point on the ladder and then to have the character climb up or down the ladder just enough so that they were at the point where you clicked on the ladder. The first thing I needed to know was where to climb to, which is fairly easy to figure out by taking the cursor position and finding the nearest point to the cursor on the line between the origin and the destination. The second thing I had to do was add a way for the use ladder job to know it was complete when the character had climbed to the point at which we had clicked rather than climbing all the way to one end or the other. To make that possible, I added a new float variable, climb to, to the use ladder job, which I can set with the near factor to the cursor that I calculate when you click on the ladder. This was also a good time to remove the timer, which was a bad solution because it allowed both of these ladders to be climbed in the same amount of time. With the timer gone, it was no longer possible to alert between the origin and the destination of the ladder, so the movement logic was updated to push the character towards the destination at some factor of the character's move speed, and the job is now determined to be complete when the character is close enough to the endpoint. Up to this point, the ladder job always moved the character from the origin to the destination, or from the destination to the origin. But in order to make use of the new climb to factor, I had to reimagine how the use ladder job would work. Another piece we've been using this whole time is the character, so let's also calculate a starting factor for them. The use ladder job can be simply described as a job that moves the character from point A to point B. When we create a new use ladder job, point A is set to the origin, and point B is set to the destination of the ladder that created the job. From the points A and B, I'm able to calculate the direction of the use ladder job, which will be equal to point B minus point A. By multiplying the direction times the climb to factor, we get a vector that still points in the same direction, but only reaches the climb to factor rather than going all the way to the destination. Using that information, I can then recalculate the A and B points of the use ladder job, where B is equal to A plus the direction times the climb to factor, and A is equal to A plus the direction times the character factor. In that way, I will always get a use ladder job that moves from the point closest to the character's position to the point closest to the climb to factor. After adjusting the code so that it worked in this way, I did another test and verified that the character was able to move to where I clicked with the cursor. As you can see, that worked pretty well, but it revealed another problem, which was that if you clicked at almost the top of the ladder, the character would climb so far up the ladder that it would appear that they were floating in the air. To fix this, I gave the unit a height and subtract that height from the climb to factor. However, I only want to subtract the unit's height from the climb to factor when we're climbing to the top of the ladder, otherwise I only invert the problem. To do this, we simply have to multiply the unit height times the climb to factor. That way, if we're trying to climb to zero, the unit height will be zero, while if we're trying to climb to one, the unit height will be whatever the unit height is. Testing that out, I'm now able to click almost at the top of the ladder, and the character will now stop with their hands approximately where we clicked rather than their feet. And I consider that to be a pretty good improvement. However, I quickly encountered a new problem, which was that if you clicked to climb part way up a ladder, once the character had climbed to the point you clicked, it considered the job complete, which means that if you then gave it a new order, so just to move anywhere else on the map, it would immediately start moving there because it had essentially forgotten that it was climbing the ladder. This ended up being a particularly tricky problem to solve. When a job is updating, it returns a status to tell its job sequencer what it's doing. That status can either be running if it's still doing work, or complete once it's finished everything it needs to do. So the first change I made was to the use ladder jobs, so that it would only return complete if the character had reached point B, and if point B had a climb to factor of either 0 or 1. That causes the job to remain active if you only climb to the middle of the ladder. 
However, a lot more work was needed than that, because if you clicked to use the ladder several different times, what would happen is the job sequencer would queue up multiple use ladder jobs, but because the first use ladder job continues running because you only climb to the middle of the ladder, the second and third use ladder jobs are never able to start, and in fact the unit is stuck forever because no matter what job you try to add, that active use ladder job just continues running, doing nothing. So I added some features to the job sequencer so that when it was given a new job, it could check if that job was the same as the active job, and if it was, rather than adding it, it could update the active job to reflect the desired outcome of the new job. Essentially reusing the job that was already active and running, and avoiding the problem of stacking up a bunch of duplicate jobs it could never complete. With those changes made, I tested once again. You're able to click on the ground at the top of the ladder, the character will climb through it. You can click on the ground at the bottom of the ladder, and the character will climb all the way down. You can click on the ladder and the character will climb to the point you climbed. From the ladder you can click anywhere else on the ladder, or you can click off of the ladder and the character will exit. So in the end I'm really happy with it. I think what the character does for all of the different inputs that a player can give makes sense and is intuitive. And the job itself is pretty simple and works for all the different cases without any bugs. Oh, wait. So yeah, I'll have to work on that. Um, hopefully you found this interesting. That's all I've got for this one. Thanks for watching.